What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be continuing working with PFSense and today we're going to set up a VPN with OpenVPN on our new PFSense firewall router whatever you'd like to call it. Um, we're going to use OpenVPN because it's the most common, it's secure, it's compatible with all operating systems, phones and it's probably one of the easiest VPN methods you'll use. And out of the three that that PFSense offers, I think it's the simplest. So you probably used OpenVPN in the past, and today we're going to set it up so you have an OpenVPN tunnel from your PFSense router or firewall to anywhere you want outside your network. So let's get right into it. So to start, you got to get back into your PFSense dashboard. And if you remember from last video, we set all this up. If you don't have it set up, go back to the last video. I'll have a card up in this corner. One of these videos I'll get it right, but I'll have a card up there so you can go back and set up PFSense. And if you don't have anything set up, go back two videos ago and set up the network interface you need for this video. So maybe there'll be a card for that one too, or I'll put some links in the vid in the description and we'll make a little playlist up. But it's been a series that we're building off of and now we're up to the next part. So we're gonna set up our VPN. So like I said, we are gonna use OpenVPN. So if we come up here to the toolbar and we click OpenVPN, there are two other options. There's IPSEC and L2TP, but we're gonna use OpenVPN for this video. So we're gonna click on OpenVPN and when we come into here, there's a lot of different options and some of these can be intimidating if you click on them. If you click add, it's gonna open up another window with a ton of questions on it. But we're gonna use wizards to make it a lot simpler. So we're gonna come down here and you can select what kind of user you wanna use. If you're typically just trying to make a user to access home, you're going to use a local user. These other ones you'll see more in enterprise or production environments. Um, it adds more security. It's going to be ways to authenticate and we don't really need that. So we're going to click local user. So we're going to give it a descriptive name. We have Barmine. And for this stuff, you can pretty much leave it default if you want. Uh, I'm going to leave it blank. Uh, it wants a little bit more info. So we give it the US and we'll go from there. So the interface that we're going to access through is the WAN. It's going to be on UDP and the default OpenVPN port is 1194. You could change this to if another port if you want. So you could do like 1194.2 or 1194.8 or you could add more to it. It's just going to change the port, the outbound port that's going to be used to reach into the network. So no matter what, you have to open a port up to the public. So oh, 1194 is the well-known one. I'm going to leave it default. All the cryptographic settings I'm going to leave default because they're set to be the best. Well, I'm not going to say the best. You might have other options, but I'm going to leave them default just to make it simpler. I'm not familiar with all the different cryptographic options, so I'm going to make it easier. So now here is the important part. So we need to make a tunnel network. So typically VPN tunnels use a 10 address. So I'm going to use that or you can make it whatever you want. So this would be the actual network address you're going to receive when you enter the tunnel. So I'm going to make it 10.10.10.1. So I'll make that my network and I got to give it a site or notation. So I'll give it a slash 24. So you can either force all client generated traffic through the tunnel so that would be equivalent to making a full tunnel VPN. So if you're not familiar, this is a little diagram I found. This would be you out in the public. And if you want a VPN backed into your house, you have two options. You could do a, v a full tunnel or you could do a split tunnel. So a full tunnel would send all your traffic through your VPN back into your home network. And then that's how it reach outside. If you're going to do a split tunnel, if you just want to access maybe a NAS you have or other file shares, then you can do a split tunnel so you have access to the file shares and then you could go out to the internet. So you'd still be able to reach out to the internet and reach your file shares, but you wouldn't be sending all of your traffic through. A full tunnel sends all your traffic through your home network over the VPN to reach out to the public internet. So those are the two biggest differences. So if you just want to reach a NAS or some sort of service you run at home, a split tunnel is perfect. If you want to send all of your traffic back through your VPN, then you want to do a full tunnel. I'm going to leave it as a split tunnel, so I'm just going to leave that. And then this is the network that will be accessible. So I want it to be this network, the 192.168.50.0 slash 24 network. This is how many connections you want at the same time. 
So I'm going to leave it blank because I don't really care at this point. I'm going to leave this all default. I'm going to leave it default. And if you want duplicate connections, so if you want a user to be able to have multiple connections at once, then you could check that off. I'm going to leave it unchecked for now. I'm going to leave all the DNS info how it is. And we're at next. So now we're going to be almost done. So I want the firewall to make the rule, and I want the OpenVPN rule made too. So this will actually write the rules of the firewall for you. I'm going to click next, and we're going to click finish. So after you're finished creating the actual tunnel, there are a couple more steps. So we can come over to clients and check that so we don't have a client. And we also need to make a user. So we can come over to system, and we're going to come over to user manager, and we're going to create a user. So we're going to click add, and we're going to make a user. So we're going to make bar mine. We're going to give it a password. Confirm the password. I type and we're gonna give it a name, we give it a bar mine, give it an expiration date if you want, but I'm gonna leave it blank so it doesn't. And we're gonna make it a certificate. So we're gonna come over here, it's gonna be bar mine VPN. And in the last one, you remember we made a certificate authority, so we're gonna use that again. It needs to match up with whatever you use to your VPN. So if you change, you have multiple VPNs or whatever it is, you need to make sure you use the right certificate authority that matches. And other than that, I'm going to leave it default. So now Barmine has a user. And if I come back over to my VPN, we can do that. So we do need one more thing too. And we got to come up with Packet Manager and Available Packages. And we need to search for Open VPN search and I already installed it so if you didn't you already if, you, if you're searching for it, it's gonna look like this it's gonna be open VPN client export and this just makes it so you could actually export the client for the VPN so after this we should just be about done so now that everything's all set up we need to actually export the client key so after you add the open VPN export package you can come over to client export you'll be ready to export it. So pretty much everything's gonna be set by default. The host name resolution is the only option that might change. If you have a static IP address, this is gonna be your external IP address, so your WAN address. If that's static, you could leave it as interface IP address, but if you're using like a DDNS service, like DuckDNS, or maybe you push it to Cloudflare using uh, like the Raspberry Pi script or whatever you might do, you would need to change it to other, and then you would have to fill in that information. But I'm gonna leave it as interface IP address. Other than that, pretty much everything else is fine. I don't really want to change anything else, and that's all good. And then you have the option of how you want to export it. So I'm going to use the most clients. We're going to download it. So then I have the .ovpn file. So now that that's downloaded, I could actually add this into my OpenVPN download. So if we come into here, I can go over to OpenVPN and you could actually grab the downloader to install on your machine. It's pretty simple. You just come over here and you grab it. And then after it's installed, you'll get this little option down here in the taskbar. And I see that you can't see it. So I'm going to open it up. So for the time being, we're going to move the camera up to the corner. So if you come down to your taskbar, you'll see there's, it almost looks very similar to the Windows icon, and the network icon, and it's going to have a lock on it. So that's your open VPN. And then you can come over here and you can import file. We're going to import the file. So it gives us the file explorer. And I want to go into my downloads. And then here it will give you, it's going to filter it out by .ovpn files. So here is my config. We're going to add it, and you can see it was successfully added. So now your config is in there, and if I right-click on it, you'll see I can connect, and it's going to ask for my password, or mine. And I'm internal to internal, so it's not going to work. So you can't connect to your VPN anytime you're internal. You do have to be external. I can't simulate another external VPN, uh, external address for this, so I can't test it out but yours will work so 
once you're out of the, your local network, you'll be able to connect and you'll be all set up. So that was how we set up OpenVPN to have a VPN connection with your if your PFSense firewall slash router or however you want to call it. So OpenVPN is super simple and it's a very useful tool to have. And having your VPN to be able to connect back to your house or however you want to do it is super helpful to have. Let's say you're a student and you go to school and you want to access your NAS at home to store all your files on. Uh, I used to do that personally. I used to host a NAS at my house and I would use my VPN tunnel to get back in and host all my work for school to make it super simple so I could share it amongst my workstation at home, my laptop when I'm out of the house, at school or whatever it may be. Or maybe you just have certain services you host internally that you want to be able to access out of your house. Uh, whatever it may be, having a VPN is super simple and incorporating it into PFSense is too. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We're going to keep working on more stuff with PFSense and I'll see you in the next one.